Hello. Um, hello, Nikki. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Good. Who's Helly? <laughs> hello. Hello. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. I can't see myself. Okay. Video. So in the bottom uh, left hand corner is a thing called mute and stop video. Yeah. You have to click stop video or start video. <laughs> oh, it's you. It's Helen. I was like, who's Helly? <laughs> what? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm oh, fine. How are you? <laughs> You, you've solved the mystery when your face arrived. <laughs> it's you, it's you. I don't know if many other people are coming. I think there's a lot of people on holidays. So you, you two aren't on a holiday. <laughs> no. I, I'm on a holiday. This is my mum's house. So I'm in my mum's office drinking from my mum's yellow cup. Nice. <laughs> How are you two doing? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. I was like, I kind of had the flu cold thing. Mm. I was a bit like sniffly and sleepy and ill for a while. So I'm just kind okay. of coming out of that now. So that is that typical stop and then you get ill, <laughs> like teachers. <laughs> yeah, I think so. And it hasn't happened for a while. I've been pretty good. It happened like a couple of years ago. I went to Morocco and was ill for almost the whole week. It was mm. horrendous. And then Robin was also ill. And we, so I'll tell you the story really quickly. We were supposed to stay in another place in Morocco. And then that person said, no, that place is full. So he hired out a whole hotel for me and my four friends and Robin, closed the whole hotel and said, this is my gift to you because you couldn't stay in our place. So we had loads of rooms in this like hotel and then um, in one night, Robin vomited in one room, then we moved to another room and she vomited in the next room. So then they moved us to another hotel room where she had a nosebleed. So they moved us out of that hotel room and then we went to another hotel room where she smashed a glass and soaked the beds. So then we went to another hotel room. Like it was like just all night, just vomiting and nosebleeding and smashing glasses. Oh, no. so well, to be honest though, you might as well. You got a whole yeah. hotel. And we had maids, like we could just get a maid who came and like picked us up and moved us to the next room where we were like, oh, <laughs> um, so that, that's, that, that's that. And then I also burnt my nose in Ireland. Oh. Um, so yeah, what have you two been up to? Um, I've been to the seaside. Very nice. Yeah, I went up to up north to Lytham St Anne's and went to the seaside, had barbecue, had a little mini break, mini holiday. So, uh, yeah, but other than that, working, working, working. And how about you, Nikki? Have you managed to get away? We're going well. I'm taking the kids up to my mum's next week for a week, so... Mm, holiday Ugh, just chaos somewhere else but uh, my mum will be there help so <laughs> yeah this is good this is good um so we're just going to assume it's the, just the three of us which is quite nice um and what i wanted to talk about today is kind of carrying on those conversations about uh pricing and then talk a little bit about packaging and how you can package prices not package prices package your services or if you can't see a way to do that, how maybe you can get people to kind of buy again and again. So is there kind of something that you can do to turn people who are customers into long-term customers? So have I review had a think about the stuff that we spoke about in the Zoom a fortnight ago? Did you get to watch it, Helen? I, w I watched it, but it wasn't actually there. So I only got the half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I could see. Yeah, um, very true. Um, yeah, I am recording it from the beginning this time. <laughs> I think it's because I was there at the beginning going, hmm, is anybody coming? And then I thought, well, nobody wants to watch this for five minutes. So I paused it and then didn't unpause it. Hmm. 
So I was, uh, yeah. And so have you, like, so I created a workbook, like kind of giving people some hints and tips on pricing and thinking about how they feel about money and um, asking you to think about, are you charging enough? Do you know what money's coming in every month as opposed to what money is coming out? Because we had um, Shona on the call, um, and she was saying that even though she made lots of money, actually at the end of the year she hadn't made any money because of the things that was going out. So how? Let's start with you, Nikki. Have you had a thought about those things? I think that's kind of helped me. Oh, into yeah. Carry on. Um, because of what I do, I don't have kind of physical products and all this kind of stuff. So I always kind of think, oh, well, you know, I don't really have any outgoing costs, but actually sitting down and thinking about the kind of the schedulers that I pay for and Canva and this and that, there's, there's quite a few and it soon adds up. So actually yeah, sure. sitting that out and kind of then going back and incorporating that into what I need to be charging has been useful because I hadn't really thought about that before. Um, so yeah, that's been quite helpful. Did it surprise you how much it cost you to run your business as well? Um, it was a little bit more than I thought. Yeah. It wasn't like terrifying. <laughs> I think yeah, it was just a few things that I'd just kind of forgotten about because I've had them for such a long time. I kind of hadn't really kind of entered my head to, to write them down on paper. So, so yeah, that's been quite useful to kind of keep that in my mind actually when looking at at what my costs and my prices need to be. And um, I think in an email I sent the Excel spreadsheet that I use. Did that make sense to people? There was like the, the top half of it is kind of like what money comes in each month alongside each client. So you can have some clients that give you money every month and then some that just come and go. Um, a kind of middle section, which is if say if so this is this makes sense for you nikki say if a client of yours asked you to do facebook advertising but you had to pay for the facebook advertising initially and then they pay you for it afterwards that's not like one of your business costs so you yeah. would put that in that middle section and then that's then there's a section for all the outgoings each month i'm not saying that i fill that in every month that's generally like a yearly thing that I go into that detail. Um, but I've got a good idea on what it costs me to run my business kind of every month. And it's kind of between five and 700 pounds, I'd say. I spend on my business a month, um, which probably when I run my business for the first year, I ended up making nine grand because I had no idea what was going out and I hadn't added it up in any way. And it was kind of a shock at the end. So I'd say if you can get a handle on that at the beginning, then you can start adding those prices in to the, to the things that it costs you, you know, to run your business, including this group. Like this is a business cost as well. So that needs to be in there also. How about you, Helen? Um, well, I've uh, just had to file my first year of accounts. So I've got kind of everything spreadsheeted up. And I've invested in an accountant, which has been brilliant because I've had a tax return, I've had a tax rebate. Uh, mm. So, because uh, I stopped work, you know, from salaried work to not. So um, that's been really good because I've had to sit down and do it. And I, I do like a spreadsheet, I must say. So I do, I, I'm quite good at kind of keeping all that in check, but I'm one of those, I, I kind of binge spreadsheets. So I do it all in one go, steal myself up and do it all in one go so it was really helpful when you said you need to keep kind of keep track of it every month and yeah. just work out what you're bringing in and what's going out and then that's what you're earning so it's all that's what you're making for the business so it it was really helpful kind of just having that reminder because it's it sounds really obvious but it's really <laughs> useful to kind of hear it and and that's that's what I've done I've focused on that this week and I've kind of worked it out kind of I'm, I'm sort of yeah. still feel like I'm in really early stages of what I'm doing so um it's all a bit you know wishy-washy some days but um it's kind of getting there and I feel like I can sort of say now what I'm, what I'm bringing in so that's really good um and I think the other thing is then when people kind of can could maybe question you on your prices you can say no this is how much it costs me to run my business and if I went any lower than this 
and there's no point me running my business so this is how much it costs yeah so if you can go in with that kind of certainty of what things cost because you know how much it runs to cost your business there's less room there for kind of feeling like maybe i'll take it off or i'm not worth that or all those kind of things oh i'm like echoing back at myself am i echoing back at you guys no, no. good good i i haven't shown you yet but like I w i'm going to show you this in real time when i go back to my office but this is kind of what i've drawn on a um whiteboard at the range you can get it at the range and i've kind of split it up into 12 boxes and every month I'll put in like, I don't know, and I'll just go through my Santander bank account, essentially. So it's not precise, like there'll be other things, but I just put one figure, which is how much has come in. So maybe like, maybe like in month one, I've had six grand come in and maybe like three grand has gone out in various things. And then I just minus those two numbers. And then I know that the kind of net profit for that month is the three grand so every month I do that vaguely it's not as good as doing the whole spreadsheet thing because I'm like you Helen I have like I'm gonna get into the spreadsheet now and I maybe have a day and I just do it for the whole year or two days but I do this at the end of every month so I know what's coming into my bank account and I know what's going out of my bank account and I roughly know what I'm making in profit and then I know if I'm making my goals, you know, if I said I want to make four grand a month and I'm making this, then I'm like, oh, well, what could I do next month? Or maybe actually I'm fine here or shit, I need to make more money. But at least you know what that is. And then that's in my office and I look at it every day, like it's in front of me. And I think when you start to kind of face up to this level, then you can't kind of hide from it anymore how about you maria <clears throat> um well <clears throat> i had a whole a whole day on my um finances on friday um and i did a spreadsheet because i i recently went on a course have you heard of serena humphrey the f mm. word yeah i have she came and spoke at my first tuesday network that i used to run years ago but i missed i was away on holiday on that one but yeah uh, i've heard so, good things yeah she's really good so um like we for this one out of change project I've been doing we filmed her like doing a course um and actually people will be able to get access to that well I'll let you know when we put the videos up because anybody can get access to this course now ah that's great thank you Maria um so she sent me some spreadsheets and it basically just talks about the cash flow so like you put in all your figures and also um I downloaded this um this thing called um money desktop have you heard of it no i wrote it down money desktop yeah it's a finance app and it basically it's sort of free to look at but it basically it pulls all the data from all of your bank accounts and stuff and it gives you an idea of like what you've spent your money on and you know it's it's really really good because for me, I've got like two different bank accounts, but this pulls everything together. Okay. Um, and and then you can download um, Excel spreadsheets from it as well. So you can actually put it into your financial spreadsheets. Um, amazing. Yeah, it's really good. Because um, I was just looking at like apps and things like what, you know, what's good. And I did a little bit of research and that came up. So what I did was I used one of Serena's um spreadsheet so she's got one called money control sheet and it lets you know like basically so I can see what where I'm short so I've put everything in and I know exactly what I've got to bring in sort of next month and that, that's kind of helping me sort of visualize because I kind of feel like with the sort of visualization and stuff thinking oh well you know I need to get more clients in blah 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 but I never actually sat down and thought, okay, but what does that look like from a cost point of view? Like, what am I, what am I visualizing here? What do I need to bring in? Mm -hmm. um, so now I've got a target, I've got a goal in my head. So I feel like it's going to help me, like, because I know exactly where I stand, what I've got going out in the next few months, what I need to sort of have in place over the next few months. So, so yeah, I feel like I'm, I'm getting get my act together 
And does that drag like things like your electricity bill as well? Like, does it drag the the costs for you living your life or is it just the business costs? Um, well, what I do, so I've got a couple of separate spreadsheets that kind of go behind it. So I've got one for the business and one for me. And one the one for me is like the bit that I know that I need to pay myself. So I know what I've got to earn every month um, because I'm also reading a really good book by a guy called Rob Moore. Have you heard of him? No. So, um, can you, can you go and drop some of these things in the group? Yeah. Is yeah. That, yeah. I'll do great. that. Yeah. Yeah. Love um, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of a bit practical, but a bit kind of, you know, he talks about like the law of attraction and visualization and all of that, but he's also really practical with his money advice as well. And, um like he's just like you know a normal guy from peterborough type thing you know he's and he does a podcast as well okay um so yeah it's really interesting so he kind of explains about money and talks about money but he also like invests in property and in, invests and like you know he, he's there's some practical stuff in there um and the bit that the penny kind of dropped with me um when I was reading this book because he said you know you you should always pay yourself first because it's like you wouldn't you know if like you because it's like we we give ourselves what's left yeah said, but you've got to you've got to pay yourself first so mm -hmm. that you get that in your mind like first and then you know so and then that that's kind of helped me because it's like well I know exactly what I want so I've started to reframe my thinking and think okay so what do I actually want well I, I want to be able to save this amount of money a month I want to be able to you know buy some decent clothes every now and again I want to be able to like all the stuff that like you, you sort deserve. Of, you, yeah but you don't you feel like you don't deserve because you don't necessarily have the money coming in type thing yeah. um so so yeah so I feel like <clears throat> I'm doing a lot of work like around that at the minute I really like that idea of working out and paying yourself first because I think a lot of people in business tend to pay out all the bills, all the bills, all the bills, and then just go, Ugh, that's what's left. I'll put that into my current account. I'm going to survive on that and then just keep going that way. But actually concentrating on what you can shuffle over for your payment and then manage the rest to pay all the bills. That just sort of, it's just, it's just switching it around, isn't it? Which makes you the most important thing rather than everything else most important. And then you're like secondary. Yeah. In running your business. And it's, that means that you're then paying yourself a salary. Yeah. Which is, you know, you're running a proper business if you're paying yourself, putting the same amount of money into your bank account every month. Yeah. Ah. I like it. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. And if you could put that in the group, that would be grand i so, will thank you um so okay so there's, there's always like more work to be done on that and spreadsheets and working out what money needs to come in and making sure that you pass any costs that it that you create to run your business like the canva or i'm sure helen you buy loads of materials to do your workshops and you don't want to be out of pocket. They're having an amazing time and everybody's getting loads of value out of whatever it is that you're delivering and you're there sort of going, ah, mm. and not kind of covering the costs. I think the next part of that, if you're managing to get people through the door, is how do you get them to buy from you again and again? How do you, how could you create some packages or how can you create some kind of loyalty scheme or something that keeps people coming back? So how about Nikki? How have you, like, are your clients kind of long-standing clients who are with you for a long period of time or do you have people that kind of come and go? Um, it's a bit of both at the moment. So I have kind of uh, uh, two main clients, which is ongoing work, yeah, um, which is great. And then the other side is what I'm kind of looking at at the moment. I have quite a lot of... So I, when I'm asking people like, you know, what it is it that they want, um, it's always training. And also I'm finding a lot of people 
looking for people to create their assets for them for social media. So that's something that I'm looking at at the moment as well. Um, and how that works and how to charge for that as well. Um, because the ongoing stuff is fine. That's day-to-day -day social media management. That's all, that's all fine. And that I'm happy with what I'm charging those clients at the moment. Um, but yeah, it's the other stuff where people want, I guess one-off things, but they could not be one-off things. They could be kind of more regular. Um, so I've had a few people that have wanted um, some Instagram assets and they've then come back to me maybe a couple of months later and asked for some more. And so, yeah, but it's just figuring out actually what I want to charge for those properly. Cause I've kind of just done it as a bit kind of, a bit of this and that here and there at the moment, but actually looking at offering that to people and what I, what I put out as a charge for that. So yeah, I'm a bit stuck on that at the moment. So, so I suppose for you, like thinking about creating assets for people, could you package it and say like, this is what it would cost to get three months worth of assets, this and what, what it would cost to get six months, and maybe there's, there's a, they get a bit of a discount if they work with you over a longer period. Yeah because it's really difficult if people just come for you for one thing and then you do that one thing and then they run away there's a lot of marketing and relationship building and chatting to get people free to have one thing you really want to see if you can continue that yeah again and again and again or maybe they like block book five or something yeah which is kind of a bit of what i've been talking to people about that you know, for their benefit as well, not to have a bank of assets, they just use them all and then and then all of a sudden everything goes quiet for a month on their platforms and then sure. they come in and it's another month and then all of a sudden they have another burst of stuff. So yeah, but yeah, actually looking at, uh, yeah, perhaps a discount if, for signing up for longer periods or larger amounts, yeah. I think like that's, that's, yeah that's the way to do it like and if i don't know if people maybe pay you like a small subscription monthly and you give them like two things to, or three things to share on instagram then it doesn't feel like a lot to them but you're getting that regular stuff in then if you can get 10 15 people doing that yeah suddenly that's that's not a lot to each person so i'd be looking how can you kind of do that type of thing yeah and then it's a bit more guaranteed as well that's it because at the moment it is like that side of things I can't predict any of it at the moment at all um, yeah and you can just say I won't just do one for you because there's no point because you'll just look really exciting and then nothing will happen and then it's not going to benefit you but what you could you could enroll on my Instagram asset program or call do you know what I mean call it something and every month you'll get three or one thing a week or something you know and you yeah. can go up, you can go up a tier maybe try and think about what that could look like yeah, that's a good idea. And then see if you can get some regular income coming in. How about you, Helen? Do people come back mostly to your creative courses? Yeah, so... Have you, I, Helen, have you and Maria met, Helen? Uh, no, I don't think so. Do you want to introduce yourself? Because I know that Nikki and Maria have been on the same call. Um, I wasn't even sure who you were when you turned up as Helly. I was like, who's Helly? <laughs> I know. So, um, do you want to tell people what you do, just quickly? So, um, hi Maria. Hi. Um, I run an art school. Oh. So I sorry, dishwasher draining. <laughs> um, I'd like to go to an art school. Yeah, yes. I think we should do yeah. an indie we have a meeting art here. school. Like I think I love it's so creative, Maria. You should like they look they yeah, I'm like, wow, I wanna do that. Anyway, <laughs> carry on. Sorry, Helen. Uh, so I run courses for little ones and big ones and adults just all sorts of things and um, I've been running a year so it's my sort of first year anniversary of doing this and um, yeah. Congratulations! Well, yeah. <laughs> You'll have to post a link because I, I have genuinely I just was did a search the other day for like art classes and stuff because oh, I'd like really? something okay. yeah. yeah. Well I will. <laughs> So um, my business is I'm a coach in the construction industry. Oh, okay. So I've always been in construction and then retrained as a coach and now I work with SMEs and micro businesses and help them to grow their businesses and be more profitable. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. 
My husband spends a lot of time in quarries, so I, I understand. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Glamorous life, <laughs> isn't it? it? Can be, yeah. <laughs> so, Lots of fun. He does it for yeah. his job. How, how does it work with you, Helen? How do you do you get your clients coming back repeatedly, or do some people just come in for? So, I'm finding it's quite yeah. organic um, yeah. because I get so I get a preschool class in, and then a brother and sister, older one, wants to come to an after school class because of what I've done with them or a grandparent comes into a drawing class and then tells the son or daughter about the kind of kids' classes. So it kind of, it's feeding off itself at the minute. And I've found since I've been um, very visual on my, in my actual space, once I've got them in yes. to my school, uh, I've got them because they're looking at everything I've done and they're, oh, you've got adult classes. Oh, you've got this, that and the other. And um, so it's kind of quite... I've, I'm, the people I'm getting in are, are always friends of friends or relations and, and that seems how you know it seems to be how I'm growing it at the moment and Which can they great. like block books like session yeah. no I do I do a discount rate for block booking and does that work yeah. do they yeah do it, it does yeah I mean to be honest I'd rather have um anyone than no one yeah <laughs> uh, sure. so I'm, I make my prices, I think I'm quite fair to the people that show the loyalty and come every week and then they might have a week off sick or something like that. So, you know, I do try and make it fair for them so that they're kind of rewarded for the commitment really. And then um, a little bit more expensive for those who are coming in to do one-offs. But I suppose that gives them the flexibility to not be there every week. So it seems to be working quite well, I think. I'm I'm still not hundred percent sure of what I'm you know of what I'm charging is right because um, but I'm getting people coming back so I presume it's it feels it feels right to them I don't know if, I don't know I'm 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 I feel quite guilty about charging people to do what I do because it feels too nice because you're enjoying it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> I think there is a thing when you, when what you do comes really easy to you and you really, really enjoy it and you're having a lovely time, then you're like, well, why should I charge for this? Because it comes so naturally to me. Yeah. But you're sharing an experience with people that's kind of priceless in a sense anyway, yeah. isn't it? Like the ability yeah. to feel creative and draw. And also you used to be a teacher. Like you would never have dreamed of going into the school and teaching five days a week and not getting paid. Like you would have been spitting feathers and on Twitter doing hashtag <laughs> education cuts and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So just because you run your own business, you deserve to be paid as much as you were when you were in the teaching profession. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe more because there's more risk involved in this and you don't get holiday pay and you don't yeah. get sick pay and you yeah. Know. So I would look at it like try and just see it as with as much value as being a teacher yeah because because you get feeling bad about not wanting to charge for it means there's something in you that says that there's not as much value yeah and you're giving amazing value and people have great times and then they come back mm. and would you do it for free no like, get tired pretty quick yeah and maybe your husband would climb out of a quarry and come and shout <laughs> at you <laughs> Probably. Why are you paying, paying the bills? Um, I would be like, did you see, did you hear, because we were talking about like putting prices up incrementally as well. Yeah. And having a play with that. And yeah. there may be room for you to even put it up a little bit. But I was saying that one of the ways that I have put my prices up slowly is every 10 people who buy something, I put it up by 10%. Yeah. And then the next 10 people until now I'm at a point where I'm like, actually, I'm quite happy with the way that I price things. Like if I put it any higher, I probably wouldn't work with the people that I want to work with and it feels comfortable. But it took yeah. me a while to get to that point where it's like, OK, yeah, I'm not busting a gut and earning no money, which doesn't feel nice for any length of time. You know, you yeah. end up sweating it. So I don't know if you feel like that's something that you could do. So, yeah, next, I've just done my prices for next term, starting September, and I, I have put them up. Nice. Because, you know, I thought, well, actually, 
you know, this is serious now. <laughs> Stop yeah. playing anymore. And it is, you know, and I did your salary thing where you said, what do you want to be paid and divide it down. And, and actually you can start to see how it could work. It could, it could happen. Um, the book, uh, I, well, I listened to the audio book of um, Denise Stuffield Thomas, yeah and, um, she she breaks it down in that you know you only have to sell this many of this to get this and actually when you start thinking about that it's it doesn't seem quite so scary and intimidating to make that much money because you know it's doable you just need those many people or that many things to be sold and you can do it so it's sort of getting your head around that I think it's been really important for me yeah and I think when you like such a big amount when you think of how much you want to earn it's like huge isn't it and then you think well how can I do it I work three days a week you know how can I do that but um and I don't want to work myself to death considering I, I took time out of my career I stopped my career to to spend more time with my kids and start something new so I don't I don't want to lose all the benefits of that by working too much so yes for getting sure. balance, isn't it <laughs> Which is why maybe sometimes I think when we start our businesses, we charge a lower rate because we're like, well, I just want people through the door and I want them to experience yeah. what it's like and I haven't got, I'm not as experienced as other people and you give yourself all this stuff. But there's at some point where you have to go, okay, now I'm going to charge a proper amount so that you're not working yourself into the ground so that you can yeah. just work three days a week and then yeah. spend the time with your family. And that's, that's good. And that's okay. Um, yeah, I just, yeah, it would be interesting to look at your business model a bit more, maybe at a later date. But just think, I know that somebody in Blue Stocking said something really interesting, I can't remember her name, where she created like an online holiday, like drawing, online packagey thing. Yeah, I've seen, it. I've seen yeah. that. And you yeah. kind of bought it and then you could just go on holiday and do drawing every day for seven days and kind of go on holiday on your own to somewhere like Venice and have a purpose, which is, I think sometimes as women, it's like, well, I want to go on holiday there. Maybe I don't have anybody to go with. What's the point? What am I doing? Yeah. So there's things like that out there that as you grow, maybe yeah. you think about, is there something that you can create once that you can then sell a few times well I've got millions of um, lessons now that I've designed so I want to do something with those um, book possibly or courses online possibly yeah, or... fabulous so it's in the early stages but now I've got a year's worth of stuff I can quite easily do it there's a really interesting lady what's her name Cara Cara Holland at um a business called graphic change and she does the drawing um in meetings you know these graphic illustrator stuff and she's just written a book called how to draw your business which will be out soon which looks amazing and she does online drawing workshops and people do that online so maybe it's kind of a different thing but yeah go check out what she's done with her business because now she's making this recurring revenue all the time um yeah. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Maria? We work quite closely together, so I know you yeah. have interesting things happening. Yeah, so, um, well, I've been sort of, I have been thinking about prices because, like, I've got, I tend to have packages. So I've got, like, one package called um, Tools to MD, which is basically taking somebody on a journey from being on the tools to become an MD of their company and, um so I charge like a certain amount for that and they sign up for 12 months and sort of pay monthly. So I've got one person doing that at the moment. And then I've got another package called 4P to 4 million, which is basically when you're a bit more established um, and you want to sort of take, it's more about the company than the individual. But I guess I'm not feeling, I'm not as confident in that because I sort of priced it quite high um and I did sort of take advice but I did I priced it quite high and then I got somebody signed up and they said they'd do a trial so they did one month and I do feel like I did sort of you know add value like you got you knew exactly what you had to do with his business and but also I think I probably scared him a bit because the way I work is quite holistic so it's not just about the business it's about the person as well and like I trust my intuition, like when I'm working with people, 
but anyway he decided not to sign up for the program so then I was thinking well is that too much so then I've brought the price down a bit but I've never actually sold that course so I kind of I'm just not not so confident I think I probably just need to focus on that a bit I think do you think the guy who bought it knew that you're kind of a bit woo-woo and holistic and because no. we've got these big people in construction like oh yeah I know. Ooh, how do you feel and they're like ah I just I want think to talk about profits and revenue I know I think I probably freaked him out a bit because stuff kind of you know I, I could see the thing is you could see where the blocks are and if he doesn't sort this area out in his life he's not going to get to where he wants to be anyway so but I think maybe that kind of um, freaked him out a bit maybe but then I thought maybe I'm too expensive I don't know <laughs> and you just think well because I've never charged myself at that rate I've got no history but then when you look at so maybe it's just a confidence thing I don't know I think that's just a confidence thing. Like, also, it's quite difficult to prove the value of something that would take 12 months in 30 days. Yeah. Like, maybe he was looking for some miracles in 30 days, but actually, that, you're just at the very beginning of that process. Yeah. So that's quite harsh for him to see, well, I, do you know what I mean, what that would look like at the end of 12 months. If you were going to do another trial, could you say, I only we only do it in three month blocks because it takes a while for us to build a relationship. You're not going to see any. Yeah, that's a good point. Anything, you're not going to see anything happening in the first month. There's no, you know, that that's not where, you know, if we work together, we have to agree to three months. That's a really good shout actually, because it's true. Like basically I think part of it as well for him was that he took one look at, he knew what he had to do. And I think it was just, he didn't want to, it was too messy. He yeah. knew he was going to have to like have difficult conversations and unpick stuff that I don't think he really wanted to deal with. So, um, so, but yeah, I think that's a really good point that, um, you know, I'll say, well, look, you're not going to see any results just after a month because it takes a while, you know, to sort of get into the floor and get stuff done basically. Yeah. And I think for all of us, when people come to us, they expect us to, to kind of know what we're doing and be able to go, well, actually, if you did that, I'd just be wasting your money. And then they would respect that more and be like, oh, OK, then there's no point in me doing that. But you can do the three months or, you know, what I mean, there's no point in me managing your social media for one month or there's no point in me doing like one Instagram picture or actually you could come to one art class, but you'll get a lot more benefit if you sign up to 10 because that's when you see the results. And we can kind of say, you know, you can kind of dip in and out, but that's not re what really, when people come to, when people are at the point of buying something, they're kind of almost there anyway. Like they, they're already looking for it. They've already found whatever it is that you do. They're already interested. And just giving somebody such a small taster probably doesn't give them a good enough indication of what that experience would be like anyway. And then they... Yeah they can flop out quite quickly then and go, oh, well, then that wasn't for me or I'm not good enough or there's no point or, you know, I mean, it's going to be too messy. Um, and actually, people need longer along the journey to, like, make a difference because I think there's, like, there's said to be three types of self-limiting beliefs. Like, the first one is I'm not good enough. Um, no one will want me and I'm not worthy. So people will say no because of one of those three things. And actually to get under people's skin or be able to really help people, you need to kind of peel away a bit of that. And you're not, you're not going to do it in a short amount of time. No, that's it. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm, my website's been updated. It's got my new services on. Um, so, and then I'm, you know, getting into the marketing floor. So see what happens and I think I think one of the things as well is like when we're packaging products or we're putting names on things or we're putting them together I think it's really helpful for each of us to have an idea of who that client would be and not in the sense of the ideal client is a man with curly hair but actually somebody that you've met that you think it would be perfect for so you're kind of creating it for them so that you can go, this is, you know, this is for you. Like, I've made this for you. Like, I think this would be great for you. I know 
when I created this group, I had one lady in mind and I went and spoke to her about it and I talked to her about it quite a lot. And when it went live, she bought it and I was like, yes, because she was the person who I'd had all those conversations with. And I know that Amy, who was in this group, who's left because she wants to do other things and that's fine. Um, she's going to the gym, to paying for the gym membership. Uh, she created a event that she marketed really heavily and nobody bought. And then I said to her, well, who was it for? And she's like, oh, I don't know. And I was like, well, didn't you have like even one person in mind who would have bought a ticket for that event? And she was like, no. And I was like, well, that's kind of the problem because you don't know who it's for. Like you don't even, you didn't even have one person who you're like, if this person buys it, it's awesome. So I think when we're putting stuff together, like think about who that person be and actually be somebody that you know and that you've met and that you can go up to and go, look, this is amazing. Like, give it a go. I think this is for you and it's gonna make a big difference. Yeah, and I did, like I did have someone in mind when I created that program, but um, they didn't buy it. <laughs> you have to go up to them again and go, hey. <laughs> look, I, I've, I've got this now, it's brilliant. Um, and I think that that helps because then that helps you write it, put it together. Like other people will still see it. It doesn't mean that if you've made it for Sally that Bob won't see it too, you know, that kind of thing. But I think with the law of attraction stuff as well, that really helps because then you've got somebody in mind. So I suppose for you, Nikki, are you drinking wine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see that, okay, eh? yeah. Just on the side. <laughs> Ah, I like it. Um, so I suppose for you, Nikki, if you're going to create like some kind of package thing for, for Instagram images or whatever you call that, like have somebody in mind who's already got one from you and you're like, this would be perfect for you and get them on board first, like go there. And, and the same for you, Helen. Yeah. I mean, do you do like, is it, do you do like, I don't know, like, oh, you should do we can retreat holidays where we go on holiday together in the Lake District and draw rabbits <laughs> <laughs> or something like, oh, I so need some calm in my life. Like I would pay to go to the Lake District and draw rabbits with you, you know. Aww. I draw a rabbit today, actually. Yay! <laughs> like or a that. real one. A real, a real rabbit. rabbit. No, no. A stuffed oh. rabbit. <laughs> just a picture of a rabbit. A picture of a picture. <laughs> just a picture. Um, I don't have any stuffed rabbits at home. <laughs> that's good. You haven't got any skulls either, because those are the type of things you used to get to draw when you were in school. It's like, no. draw a picture of a skull. <laughs> okay. That's dark. My dog. Not not a, not a, like a, a a a person skull, like a sheep <laughs> skull or something. Yeah. Like yeah. No, I don't have any of those. I haven't. I haven't got a very good collection of those yet. Right. Yeah. You said yes. <laughs> Is that Maria's next suggestion for your package? Come and draw like animal skulls. <laughs> like, <laughs> <Halloween. laughs> or something. Yeah. Like, guess which animal this is. <laughs> yeah, but if it's a rabbit, you wouldn't be able to guess because you wouldn't see it for years, would you? Really small as well. Could be great for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we're kind of coming to the end of this like wishy-washy packagey thing where I'm coming out of the flu and there's a little bit and I'm in my mum's house and it's all it's all weird like I'm not in my, in my proper place um does anybody want to share anything about that about thoughts or packaging or pricing money I think one of the things to say to add to all of this is you might have an idea where you're like oh I'd love to do that thing or I really want to add that to it you don't have to do everything in the next 12 months so maybe you've got an idea of how you want to grow your business or what you could do don't put the pressure on you to have to do it all at once like you can shelve some of those ideas and do them a bit later and I know like a while ago you know we did that thing where we drew where I suggested that you drew these three rectangles do you remember this? Yeah. You draw like you draw this rectangle, and you and you, in this rectangle you draw like how you are now, like oh I'm doing this, and then this this rectangle you draw what the future looks like, like I'm on an airplane, there's loads of money, and la 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 la, and then you draw another rectangle, and you can only put three things here to take you from this point to this point. So this is this is now. This is like oh, it's all right. 
I'm a bit stressed. I don't know. I'm not making as much money as I want to. This is like, this is where we want to get to. You know, this is how much money is coming in. This is that you've got X amount of clients. This is that you're, you've got packages or whatever this is. And you're only allowed to identify three things that you can do to get you from here to here. And so maybe creating a package is down here, but it might take you six months to get to this point. And there's two other, two other bits on your journey. That makes sense. It does. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to do everything at once. Like, it takes a, Rome, Rome doesn't get built in a day. So it's just like, how can you improve and polish what you've got? And when you're at the point where that's improved and polished, then you can start adding to it. But if you start adding to things that aren't concrete, then that's when it becomes all chaotic. So it's like sometimes we put loads of pressure on ourselves to build and build and build and build things. But actually, if we're not, if what we've got currently isn't steady and feeling like that, then it just starts to get a bit topply. So I'd be like, whatever you're offering, whatever your products are, get them watertight, you know, and, and, and firm that up as much as possible. And when that's good, then think, oh, maybe I could do an extra thing or maybe I could do a weekend drawing or maybe I could do, you know, Nikki, maybe you could do some like, online Canva tutorial where people do an online course or something, you know, maybe that's something that you want to do, which, which would be great. That, that doesn't need to be done now. It's like, what can we do now? So I suppose Maria, maybe for you, if you could get more people on the tools to MD, because that's the thing that you're on now. That's the thing that you feel confident. You've already got a client doing that. If you could get five more people on tools to MD, then it's like, okay, now try and go after those 12 months ones, but just push one thing for now yeah. feels yeah. comfortable and yeah. you're in a good place and then build on that and know that you want people in the 4p to 4 million but maybe that's not going to happen in the next six months maybe focus on the thing that's already working yeah that makes sense and build your confidence and then you're like yeah now i can do extra things oh nikki has a baby hello nikki's baby um be kind to yourselves that's my parting thing. All right, I'm going to leave you and your babies and your wine and your eating. Aww. Bye. 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 Bye.